What's going on everybody and welcome to Rock and Roll True Stories. Now this is a story in a band that a few people have requested and this is a story that's talked about in fantastic detail in the book Everybody Loves Our Town, The Oral History of Grunge. Highly recommend you guys check the book out if you love the Seattle music scene. Now Tad was a band from Seattle that was formed in 1988 by Tad Doyle. Tad shared some similarities with bands like Alice in Chains and Soundgarden as they were more heavily influenced by hard rock and heavy metal and a lot of their peers who were more influenced by punk rock. Now, Tad Doyle was a vocalist and guitarist who recruited other local musicians, including Kurt Danielson to play bass, and drummer Steve Wyde, who played in another well-known Seattle band named Skinyard. And Tad was one of the first bands to sign with indie label Sub Pop shortly after the formation in 1988. The band would put out several releases leading up to what was supposed to be their career-defining album, Eight Way Santa, which came out in early 1991. Now, the album was supposed to be a big deal for the band as it could have broke them through the mainstream, but one bad decision after another destroyed their momentum. And the first bad decision dealt with 8-Way Santa's artwork. According to Tad Doyle in the book Everybody Loves Our Town, he recounted a story in which one of his friends went to a thrift shop or a garage sale and came across a racy photo of a couple from an old photo album. The band liked the photo so much they wanted to use it as their album cover. Tad would tell author Mark Yarm, the photo was of a guy who had long hair and a woman. They both looked cooked, totally stoned and glassy-eyed and grinning year to year. Looked like they had some good sex or something, he'd say. Now, a local radio station in Seattle had received the album Eight Way Santa with the old couple's photo on the cover. And it just so happened that one of the station managers recognized the guy on the cover. And it turned out it was one of his friends and he would bring him into the radio station. The guy on the cover thought it was pretty cool that they'd used his photo and even signed it for his friend at the station. The woman on the front cover was the guy's ex-wife and she wasn't thrilled with it. She'd become a Christian singer and was so upset she took the band to court. Now Kurt Danielson, the band's bassist, would reveal the outcome of the case saying, Between us and Sub Pop, we had to pay a certain amount of money, but I don't think it was more than what they spent on legal fees. So if they got anything out of it, it was more of a moral victory in that they were able to get us yanked off shelves. Now the case also had another terrible impact on the band as Danielson would reveal it stifled the group's momentum that they'd built up several years before and he claimed the band would never recover from that. The band would end up pulling the original cover and replacing it with a generic shot of the group. Now frontman Tad Doyle would tell Vice in 2016 about the controversy saying, I didn't think we deserved it referring to the lawsuit, but I can see how it would happen. I could see their side, but at the same time, there's some stewardship that you've got to take responsibility for yourself and not take photos and leave them in a thrift store. That's why you burn them. Now, the label did have one trick up their sleeve to get some free publicity and promote the band. Now, Sub Pop had no money at this time and they wanted to get some free promotion, so they decided to stir up a little bit of controversy with the soft trick maker Pepsi. Now, there was one song on the record named Jack Pepsi, which was based on the true story of how Tad and his friend were drunk one day on Jack and Coke and decided to take a pickup truck onto an ice covered lake and well, they crashed through the ice. The label wanted to issue the song as a single using the Pepsi logo on it, but instead of the word Pepsi, they would replace it with the word Tad. Now the plan would backfire as an angry ex-employee of Sub Pop would notify the soft drink maker of the stunt and Sub Pop would be hit with another lawsuit on the same album. The two lawsuits would tank any momentum the band had gained in their career up until that point. So what do you guys think about these two moves the band made? Would you have done the same thing if you were in their shoes or would you have done something different? Let me know in the comment section below. And as always, if you guys have suggestions for future topics, let me know down below as well. And be sure to hit the like button and subscribe. And if you guys want to support my channel, simply watch another video or go check us out on Patreon. Take care.